a startling discovery in 1998. Two groups of astronomers set out to measure the rate at which the expansion of space was slowing down. And it was obvious to everybody that it was slowing down because as clusters of galaxies become more distant from each other due to the expansion of space, gravity at the same time is trying to pull them together, right? So what effect should that have on the expansion? It obviously should cause the expansion of space to slow down. Everybody was sure this was true. What they didn't know was how, what is the rate at which it's slowing down? And that's an important cosmological parameter. So these two groups set out to measure the rate at which the expansion of space was slowing down. And what they found out independently was that it wasn't slowing down at all. It was speeding up, it was accelerating. Neither knew that the other had gotten the same result, so neither was willing to publish. They said, we can't publish this. This is a stupid answer. <laughs> <laughs> it possibly be right. And then they found out through the grapevine, science has a very, very effective grapevine, uh, many of you know, that the other people had found exactly the same result. They said, well, it can't be that stupid. If that's what they also found. So they published. And of course, everybody tried to confirm that and did confirm it. It's very, very clear that the expansion of space is accelerating, not slowing down. Now, gravity can only make the expansion of space slow down, but in fact, it's accelerating. What absolutely has to be true? What's the only thing that could cause the expansion of space to accelerate? Gravity is trying to make it decelerate. There's not a force. That's the answer. But in, in other words, what must be going on at the same time that gravity is trying to pull things together? Something else must be trying to push them apart. And that something else must be stronger than gravity. Now, what just something else is, we don't know. So it's typical of our not knowing, just like we didn't know what the matter was in our galaxy. We call it dark matter. We don't know what this is. We call it dark energy. But whatever it is, it's pushing the clusters of galaxies apart. And the thing that's ironic is that this pushing force can be exactly described by Einstein's cosmological constant. That's the reason he put it in there in the first place. So it would push against gravity to keep space from either expanding or contracting. He thought they would balance each other. Well, they can't balance each other. It's an unstable equilibrium. So that cosmic repulsion force does exist. And at the present time, it's stronger than gravity. Here's the explanation of that. In the early universe, matter and radiation were quite dense. So the energy density associated with atoms radiation photons completely overwhelm the repulsive force associated with the cosmological constant. But as the universe expanded, the energy density of the matter decreased with the cube of the scale factor. The energy density of the radiation decreased with the fourth power of the uh, uh, scale factor because as space expanded, not only did the density of the photons go down, but their light, their photons were redshifted to lower energy. Whereas with the matter, all that happened was the density went down. But look what happened at some time, about 10 billion years after the expansion started. The energy density associated with the contract, with the uh, uh, deceleration, became less than the energy density associated with the acceleration. So at the present time, the gravitational force pulling the matter and the radiation together is far less than that that's causing the expansion. It's causing the acceleration of the expansion. I'm going to rush on, although I could spend another 10 minutes talking. This, and again, uh, it, it, it looks very complicated, but this is a very, very, very powerful result. Uh, in the 1980s, it was predicted that the inflationary theory was introduced. It predicted that the geometry of the universe had to be flat. That is, if you draw a huge triangle in the universe and add up the angles, the 
108 up to 180. Uh, Einstein's general theory of relativity allows either positive curvature or negative curvature. The angles could be either more than 180 or less than 180. But the geometry of the universe determines the density fluctuations in the matter which in turn determined the density fluctuations in the temperature of the matter that emitted the cosmic background radiation, and therefore the temperature fluctuations in the radiation of the cosmic background radiation exactly map the density fluctuations in the universe. And when these density fluctu when these temperature fluctuations are analyzed, this is the data. You see this there is the data. The theoretical fit to those data points can only be generated if the geometry of space-time is flat. If the universe were, say, uh, negatively curved, if we lived in an open universe, the prediction would look like this. If we lived in a closed universe, positive curvature, it would be different altogether. <laughs> this Wilkinson microwave anisotropy probe proved but this prediction of inflation theory that the geometry of the universe is flat is actually correct. Now, I intended to talk about what caused this. Is, these are associated with acoustic waves in the matter that release the <coughs> radiation. But I'll, I'll go on. This is the last slide. I, got the I, I spoke of beauty in the beginning, back in the title. To me, these two pie charts are about the most beautiful thing that you can imagine. <laughs> because these two time charts that are based on astronomical data, and this is just a representation of what the data told us, tell us exactly what the universe is like today in terms of its energy density, and exactly what the universe was like when the cosmic background radiation was released some 380,000 years after. Bang, this is from 13.7 billion years. What dominates the universe today? Our energy. What does that mean? That means that the accelerate, that the expansion of space is accelerating. <coughs> because this represents a repulsive force. These two, dark matter, which dominates ordinary matter, remember I said that about 90% of the mass of our galaxy was mass that we didn't know what it was, we just called it dark matter. Radiation is off the scale. Remember, it dipped below the energy density of matter, and it's only about 10 to the minus fifth of a contribution, so it doesn't even show. But look at what the universe was like in the beginning, if I can use that phrase. Uh, dark matter dominated. Where's dark energy on here? Well, you saw in the earlier picture, it wasn't anywhere. It was way down here. And the matter and the radiation were way up here. And the matter, of course, was dominated by dark matter. Atoms were more significant in the energy density. Photons more significant, because at the time this occurred, uh, the two were very, very equal in energy density. Neutrinos, which are insignificant today, made up 10% of the energy density of the universe. So from that oval-shaped, distribution of red and blue colors, <coughs> this is the result, this and the previous result. What we know about the universe today would have been unimaginable to scientists even 30 years ago. Even 30 years ago. We would know with some reasonable degree of confidence the contents of the universe, not only the universe today, University as it was before. Uh, it's time to stop. Uh, unfortunately, the thing I like best about talks is the question and answer period. Uh, I'm hoping that we can perhaps do this outside. I'd be very happy and uh, very glad and very interested in hearing what some of your comments and some of your.